be the subject of today's video and I do get a ton of questions on the subject coming from subscribers and also customers alike. Cars that sit outside or even in a garage or a shop. Um, the simple and quick answer to that question is I don't recommend them. Uh, all it takes is one corner of a car cover to be unsecured and a slight breeze. Um, whether you have a car sitting inside or outside will make the cover rub on the surface. That leads to wear and tear on your vehicle's finish and I'm going to show you exactly what that looks like on this Pontiac G8 GXP. This is actually a gorgeous uh, rare car in, in this part um, of Pennsylvania and it's nice to be working on one today. It sure sounds nice. Uh, so a lot of my customers know to wash their cars before they even bring it to me as we specialize in paint. Um, we're very specialized. We fall under the umbrella of detailing, but uh, we really only do one thing and that is tend to the painted finishes of a vehicle. So even though it has been washed, it's been sitting out in a lot for a few hours and it needs to be gone over and we'll use a rinseless wash to not put any further swirls or imperfections in this painted finish. You're going to be surprised that the clear coat on this is extremely soft and uh, that is another subject that we can touch upon today in today's video and this this video actually will touch upon a, a few subjects that may help you uh, that'll give you some tips and tricks and things to look for and avoid uh, welcome back to the channel good friends brian from apex detail let's get this going After a quick wash down with a rinseless wash, it doesn't matter what you use. There are many good brands out there. Uh, the Uber rinseless wash from Wolfgang's O&R, uh, American Detailer Garage, all excellent products with a ton of lubrication. I will follow that up with clay only where and when it's needed. With the shop manager uh, monitoring my every move, we move on to the next step, and that is to remove uh, bug splatter or maybe tar that splashed up, um, any uh, transfer at all, and uh, I'll choose Citral 266 from Schaefer's. Um, quick tip, this, even though hard to find online, um, can surprisingly be easily found locally. Check in any local uh, diesel um, supply or uh, mechanical shop, any ag center, any place that works on tractors, and nine times out of ten they will have it on hand and for sale. Now we're going to move on. Uh, the next step is going to be, this actually has gone through many car washes and I could feel there's a lot of that uh, hot wax stuff that's really popular in a lot of the tunnel washes these days. That can get caught up into your pads, make them uh, not very effective at all. So we want to remove as much of that as possible before the correction and that will be this step right here. With that step complete, and for that step, I do like IGL Pre-Coat and Gion Prep, uh, my go-to products for a, a panel prep. Now I can bring you in close and show you the imperfections we're going to be going after. Love marks, swirl marks, outlines and etching from water spots, but more importantly, these wear and tear marks from car covers. This has been from a cheaper cover that has a lot of seams and uh, without the cover being secure, whether it's inside or out, even the slightest breeze can make them move, rub up against the finishes of your vehicle, all finishes, and uh, wear them down prematurely. So we will correct them.
All right, before I move on, I'm going to, as usual, take measurements all the way around the vehicle, make sure all of the panels are uniform. Uh, I really don't know, has somebody corrected it before? Did they leave me enough clear coat? Has, has there been repairs? Um, and right off the bat, this very first panel that I measure, the hood here, I can see that something's off. Uh, this type of vehicle in a year, you should have a an average of five to five and a half mils of thickness of primer base coat clear coat. And the hood is about two mils thicker. I also find that on another panel going around the vehicle, the driver's side rear door. So those two panels have been repaired, resprayed, and that's something to look out for. I truly believe uh, anybody that uh, purchases vehicles, uh, is an enthusiast to automobiles, works on their vehicle, should have one of these gauges. You could take it with you when you purchase a vehicle. It will tell you very quickly if a car has been resprayed, has a Bondo filler, and can tell you a larger story, give you a larger picture of the vehicle's history. And here, again, on this panel, you'll see I'll stop and I'll go back and measure again because there's something a little bit off. Uh, the thickness of this panel is just slightly more than the rest of the vehicle as a whole. I also follow that up with a gloss meter test. Uh, I like to uh, send the car out um, with triple digit readings on the meter and you can see here there is plenty of room to work with usually four or five units uh, each jump four or five units is visible with the naked eye so we can do that multiple times here by the way I often get a lot of questions on gloss meters and which ones to purchase and look for you really only need uh, if you're working on a vehicle a meter that has 60 degree readings sometimes you'll see a 20 80 60 uh, not really necessary unless you're working with multiple surfaces high re reflectivity uh, you'll look for the 20 degree uh, but on a car's vehicle it's kind of medium so a 60 degree works fine and once you get used to one unit uh, you'll know how to utilize it. You don't need a three, four thousand dollar meter. A lot of individuals I see that have them have no clue how to use them anyway. All right, we'll move along to the test spot, one of the most important part of your correction, finding the team that is effective yet leaves the most amount of clear coat behind. And we're going to start with a very, very uh, non-aggressive team the Kachikami M302, which is a micro cut, a very, very fine abrasive. And we're going to use a pad that's quite soft and non aggressive, a light polish pad. So just a few steps above the black application pad. Always start there. If that works, hey, fine. You don't need to move on. You don't need uh, a harsh cut compound or a very aggressive pad. So let's see how this team does. All right, with the residue removed, I'll bring you guys in close and you'll see this actually did an excellent job. The imperfections are removed. Now, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but it is leaving a slight haze behind. And that's because this clear coat is that soft. It's soft and thin, so you have to be careful. Um, so I'm actually gonna take a step backwards in the next section, which has more imperfections and grab a pad that is even less aggressive. So it's only one small step above the application pad. Um, and we're gonna stick, stick with the Koch Kemi M302.
once again, residue removed, and I do have my towel uh, slightly damp with a panel prep. You don't want to spray a panel prep directly onto a surface right after it's been corrected. The pores are open, the clear coat swelled, and getting a panel prep in there is not a very good idea. Now, you can see the difference. This actually worked better. We took a step backwards, took a little bit of the aggression away. We have less hazing, it's a lot clearer, and we still have the imperfections um, are gone. Maybe one or two left behind, so maybe a second pass would benefit, but I would leave that up to you. So there we go, we found our team, we found our combination. Uh, and if it's in the budget, you can follow that up uh, by applying the black application pad and jewel the surface. When you have clear coat that soft, sometimes that is a needed step just to bring some clarity out, get rid of the hazing. It doesn't take a lot to uh, cloud up and haze soft clear coat. It's an extra step. If it's not in the budget, it's something you may want to talk to the, the owner um, about. If it's your vehicle, I would definitely take the time and do the extra step with a, uh, a glaze or a jeweling polish or a cleaner polish and really bring out the clarity of the finish. All right, I have the shop manager awake and alert again, so we'll get back to the finish of this Pontiac G8, and we'll get around it rather quickly and finish it up. Okay, with the painted finishes um, restored, let's get to the pillars, the B pillars, the C pillars, depending on what type of vehicle it is. Uh, their finishes are going to be always rather thin and soft, so I do want you to keep that in mind. Um, sometimes they are films, wraps, sometimes they're plastic, but this here is a cleared black piano finish. Very soft, so it takes... Uh, uh, finishing pad, a gloss pad, and a cleaner polish, a very fine abrasive to restore them. Now I do want to show you on this pad on the micro polisher that there can be some transfer every once in a while. Don't get concerned, that's normal. Sometimes it's a tinted clear, um, sometimes the material itself just transfers onto the pad, but if you have very light pressure and keep the speed of the polisher down, keep the polisher moving, you will be perfectly fine. It's very rare with today's vehicles that I don't have just about all of my polishers lined up and ready to go to get into some of these tight, intricate areas to get them polished up, uh, corrected, and perfected. All right, this is that extra step I was talking about earlier, and I'll use Extreme Solutions Finale, perfect for that really soft, clear, or the last step right before protection, and I like to team it up with the CarPro Gloss Pad. Let me show you exactly how this can really give you that extra boost of gloss and clarity uh, and do a 50-50 on this fender. All right, let me show you. There's a, quite a big difference here. I really don't care what you use, what pad and, and combination you use. You can use Angel Wax Perfect Polish, Car Pro Essence, or Essence Plus. They'll give you about the same results. I uh, just wanted to let you uh, know, and you can be aware that that extra step is available if needed. So after I wait for the surface to cool down after correction, again, I don't want to spray a panel prep directly onto freshly corrected and swelled and heated clear coat. 
or single stage. So I wait the allotted time and I'll use instruments to make sure the surface has cooled and it's time to coat. And we'll use our metal oxide coating, um, which many right now have been enjoying and you don't have to take my word for it. I'll put a link up above from a testi testimonial that doesn't come from me and you can enjoy that. So let me get this uh, surface protected, coated with the metal oxide coating and we can move on. Easy to use, very effective. Uh, the kit comes with everything you need from the coating, uh, enough to coat three to four cars, an eyedropper, and also the applicator. All right, we let it sit overnight. I wait 10 to 12 hours and it's time to top it before we send the vehicle on its way. And this customer enjoys bead just as much as some customers enjoy sheet. Very slick, very smooth, uh, extremely glossy and beads like crazy. And that really will do it. After windows and tire shine, you can relax, take a deep breath, Stand back a little bit, enjoy the results. Now, a shop setting can make just about any vehicle look good, so you do want to pull it outside and let the harshest critic take a look, and that's going to be sunlight. That's going to take care of today's video. We covered soft clear coat. We covered car covers. Uh, not recommended by me. Uh, doesn't matter what the quality. And we also took a look at this gorgeous, rather rare in my area vehicle. And uh, it really sounds incredible. <laughs> will do it for today's video. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. I thank you for stopping by and supporting the channel, and I look forward to sharing more information with you in the next video.